The first thought that I had was, we've got to save this cabin. It was sitting in East Knoxville. It had been vacant for a number of years. Actually, it was sitting in the back of a subdivision. It was sitting back in the woods. It really was becoming a health hazard. It was about to be condemned by the city. It got to the point where Maryville College was notified that if something did not happen with this cabin in the next six weeks, then it would be torn down and moved. And that's kind of when I got involved. I thought, well, something has to happen. So that's when I made phone calls to people and got the wheel started. I'm Cole Piper. Uh, I am a past board member of the Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center and an alumnus of Maryville College. We are sitting on the second floor of the Isaac Anderson cabin. Isaac Anderson was the founder and first president of Maryville College. Well, Isaac was born in Virginia, and as a young boy, his father relocated the family to, is today, East Knoxville, and built this cabin in 1802. And at the time, Isaac was um, very much into education. He had on the property what was came to be known as Isaac's Log Cabin, where he actually taught students who wanted additional education. Uh, and also he was very much interested in religion. He was ordained as a Presbyterian minister and was involved early on in the founding of Second Presbyterian Church in Knoxville. In 1819 it was called the Southern and Western Theological Seminary. It became known as Maryville College in 1842 when it was chartered under that name. Maryville College has a rich history of opening its doors to everyone. The first woman to get a undergraduate degree in the state of Tennessee is a Maryville College graduate. Uh, one of the very first African Americans to get a degree is a Maryville College graduate. Throughout his whole life, Isaac Anderson understood the significance and importance of education. What a great way to honor his memory is to have his cabin reconstructed in a place that is honoring the heritage of the Great Smoky Mountains. The cabin was built in 1802, uh, but obviously time had really caused it to deteriorate to a great degree. And for a number of years, they had been trying to get someone to take the cabin, to rehabilitate it, to move it, to do something rather than have it torn down. So I made a couple phone calls and Bob Patterson, who is the executive director at the Heritage Center, graciously said, you know, if you can make this happen, then not only will we take the cabin, but we'll put it at a prominent location right at the front of the Heritage Center. I would say if action had not been taken within six weeks, then the idea of having a, a log cabin with Isaac Anderson's name on it would have just been a, a distant memory. What is unique about this cabin is that it has a second floor. Most of the cabins built of that time period were just a single floor cabin, but Isaac's family and his father had the wherewithal to build a two-story log cabin. And so that's one of the unique factors of it. Obviously, the cabin, like all the cabins of this time, had a very substantial fireplace, which was really their only source of heat. Another unique aspect of this cabin is that there, the windows were glass. Once we made the determination that yes, we could save this cabin, and they started to take it down, realized that about 30% of the logs were so rotted that we could not relocate those, the logs. It was really a, a massive undertaking because when you take the cabin apart, each part had to be photographed, numbered, and then brought up here and reassembled Kind of, if you think of a, putting a Lego set together, it's putting these different pieces together. Hauled them from East Knoxville up here, then laid them out, put a, put a tarp over them, and uh, all of the brickwork and stonework that we were able to save was also brought up here. And I can remember coming up and, and looking and seeing and thinking, well, this is Isaac Anderson's cabin, but if we are not able to raise about $150,000, then this is gonna be Isaac Anderson's cabin 
laying on the ground under a tarp. So we're sitting today in the cabin, which is about 95% complete. The last real part that needs to be completed is the fireplace. We were fortunate enough to be able to save almost all of the original stone that was on the fireplace. The one significant thing you will see when completed is that for some reason, when the Andersons built this cabin, they took the stone up so far and then they finished the, the top with brick. You won't see a complete stone fireplace. You'll see about three quarters stone and then the last part is brick. The timing of the reconstruction of this cabin is significant because Maryville College is getting ready to start the bicentennial celebration of the founding of Maryville College. The ribbon cutting of the cabin will be the kickoff for the bicentennial celebration. The thing that's so nice about this is that it's right close to the entrance of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park with hundreds of thousands of visitors passing through here. They're gonna have the opportunity to stop at the Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center and go through a very historical cabin. What this does is it, it preserves and it lets this generation know what it was like for previous generations. Long term, I think the real sense of satisfaction is going to be that there's going to be people and they're going to be introduced to Isaac Anderson and who he was and how important he was to the history of East Tennessee.